Okay, looking at this boat on the keel, there's a couple of places to touch up. One's right here. And uh, you can kind of see where that's at right there. And one little spot right here. And that spot right there is kind of below the hole right there. And then from there to right here, you can touch that up with fiberglass. I'll do that when I do the inside with the fiberglass and right here and right here. Okay guys, where your motor mounts right here, uh, you have usually about, I don't know, three quarter inch piece of wood. I took and cut this out, this piece of wood right here and did the corners on it and all. And it should fit right here like that and I, I got to drill it and then on the other side right here you have a wooden piece right here I'd ta taken that off and I cut this out right here uh, to go into place right here and so that should look pretty good when I'm through with it The numbers on this particular boat right there on the back. Okay, that's how the rod holders look right here. And just want to give you a little update on the water bug. Uh, I started uh, redoing the water bug. I hadn't used it in several years um, and had some leaves in the boat and it just needed to uh, to be redone a little bit and uh it wasn't too too difficult to do that and so it looks 100 percent better and i'm gonna be using it pretty soon here so just kind of remind you i've got a video on this boat before i started on it and about the water bug history and so forth and the gnu history because the water bug is a copy of the gnu design Okay, Waterbug went out of business uh, in the 90s, I believe. But this is an 87 model Waterbug. And uh, so you buy the boat, and then you kind of make it your own, put, add whatever you want to add to them. So anyway, uh, this has been sitting out for a while, and I had not used it in a while. Um, kids got out of college and all that, and um, so I had more time to do things. So I guess one reason I haven't used it, but I have a lot of good fond memories in this boat. Used to fish in it all the time. So what I've done to it, look at the trailer right here. I painted the trailer with aluminum chrome paint, aluminum chrome uh, colored paint. And uh, so the trailer looks a whole lot better. I'd sanded the trailer down. It had some light rust on it. And so I'd sand all it down. And uh, I put brand new wiring all the way through it right here the wiring is about the cheapest thing that i that i found this is brand new wiring right here i put in it and the wiring and the uh lights on it um as you can see right here this light right here is amber light on the trailer and back here the tail lights and so forth and brake lights that was on like 23 dollars i think 24 dollars for that kit and it had everything i needed in it so um got it wired up and got it painted and uh it's the trailer's in good condition uh itself and then i put brand new tires on it i, I put these grease hubs on the uh, axle to the hub there and that way you fill those up with grease and it'll it's real easy to grease those and it won't uh, go dry on you and burn up the bearings. So that's a good thing there. Those were two of those. Those are nice ones. Those, those two cost about $24. And again, the wiring kit was about 20 i say $24 maybe. So that took care of pretty much, pretty much the trailer and painting it and you know, getting the rust, superficial rust off of it. And putting the tail lights on it. Uh, the next thing was to take the boat itself um paint was faded really really bad on it and the numbers and all that stuff were peeling off of it and uh, it had leaves inside of it um 
So I scrubbed the inside of the boat really, really good all the way through here and got all that really, really clean. Scrubbed the outside of the boat extremely well. And uh, there was some mildew growing here on this um, aluminum ridge right here all the way down. And so I took a pressure washer and pressure washed that really good. And I wiped everything down with acetone in the end. Got it really, really clean, spick and span looking. And then I painted the the boat blue, which that's the original color blue, but uh, it was a little bit lighter blue than this on the original color. But this blue looks pretty good to me. So anyway, I painted the boat uh, blue. I used about six cans of uh, blue paint. Um, it's kind of a primer and a paint together um, on the boat. And it probably cost me like $40 in paint to paint the underneath it and the sides of it and everything else. And so to me, that turned out real well uh, on the color and all. It's kind of dirty right now. It's got dust on it. Um, so painted the boat, and I got my registration here and my numbers here, and I put those on there. And get on the trailer here, I put new rope up here. I need a little bit bigger rope than this, I think. I'll replace this rope right here. And a new catch right here for it. And uh, I put a LED light up here. They take a lot less energy. And um, if you're on the river, you need a light up here on the front to show you what's in front of the river in front of you. And it kind of it's like looking through a cave. Uh, with a canopy of trees and stuff, it lights up everything. So you can see really good with these. And uh, this right here, I took uh, a uh, grinder brush and went over this right here and polished this back out a little bit. And this is aluminum, quarter inch steel. And uh, I put a new eye boat in here and I put a uh, new like, carabiner here on it and a new like anchor trolley here which makes it real easy for one man to operate the anchor by yourself in the back. You don't have to get up or anything like that if you're not familiar with these things. These are about 10, these are about eight, nine dollars a piece at Walmart and they're well worth the money. And uh, the rope here, um, I used the rope right there when pulling the boat in and on, on the trailer and stuff like that before I hook it up here. Um, and, uh, these seats right here are brand new. I got them from Amazon. They cost me about $115 maybe for both of them. And uh, so they I wanted them to match the boat, you know, kind of the color here halfway. So they're pretty nice seats right here. And um, this is the live well right here. Remember, I got a video on a little bit on this boat before I started on it. And uh, so this is kind of live well here. And I got a new uh, plug in it right here. And over here, this uh, blue part right here, this is uh, like marine plywood right here. And before I had a piece of wood like this right here in the boat, it's one of the things I learned when I fished on the river a lot, the Geechee, or Geechee River in Georgia here. Uh, you need something to hold your rod sometime, especially if they're hanging over like this right here. And so I um, cut this out and put these notches to hold the rod tip, the rod ends in here. And uh, I cut this section out right here because it looked kind of weird or gaudy looking. Um, and then over here, I put a, a hatchet. That's just the Ozark Mountain Trail hatchet, and I've got a boat holding the head part up here, and I've got a zip tie holding it right here. And uh, I put some rod holders right here up in them, those vertical rod holders. to hold your rods like here. And um, I put an LED light right here that I can flip on, which will light up the whole boat on the inside. And uh, that way I can see what's in the boat and, you know, you want to be careful if you're on the river, if you're pulling in something, you want to know what it is. Okay. Um, the other thing, too, again, this right here is the tail lights. These are brand new. Um, 
one thing I didn't show you on the front of the anchor system, on the anchor in the front, I have the same thing back here with this one. This is like a 15 pound anchor. Now, I took this uh, rubber, which is like Walmart rubber. It costs about $12 for a roll of it. It's, it's used for a sleeping bag pad to sleep on. And I cut that out so that I could put my anchor on there because, you know, some of these places you go, you, you, your trailer bounces up and down. You don't want a big anchor bouncing up and down on this fiberglass. So it makes it quieter, plus it's, uh, it doesn't damage your, your inside of your boat any. Okay, so that works out pretty good. And right here, you can keep see, kind of see the rod holders a little bit better. And I put a Lowrance depth finder. That's brand new. That's a hundred and thirty-five dollars at Academy Sports. This is the one that has GPS in it too, and it's got several functions. So you not only have your depth and your water temperature and your GPS here, um, um, you can set it several different ways. So that's really nice right there for the money, $134. You can mark your spot where you find fish, too. So, you know, that, for a boat like this, it's, that's all you really need. And I think the boat was 13 and a half feet long. This, is the, this was the biggest version of the water bug at that time. So the company went out of business in the 90s. And uh, I don't know, did I mention that? The water bug is a copy of the GNU, which came out in the 70s, but it was, the selling point of the water bug was that, even though it's a copy of the GNU, which they didn't really publicize that, is that it's got double layered fiberglass. It's heavier built than the GNU was back in those days. GNU company is still in business today, and they're an awesome company. So, this is a new seat here, and... um. Your battery holder here. The um, on the transom, I had replaced this wood. It was dry rotted, and that's marine plywood here. And on the back side here, that's marine plywood, and that's a transducer right here. And this trolley right here for your anchor. It's all new. Um, another thing too is that. Um, I bought these terminals here. Um, this one is positive and this is negative here. And these terminals right here are really nice to have because you can hook so many things to them, uh, your switches and all. And they cost, I think these were about $18 for these two right here. So I just mount them here and I hook the hook a battery cable to them here for positive and negative and they go to your switches. And on the switches, I can't find the switches that I want yet, so I went back to what I had before, and that was a regular kind of switch box here. Now, these switch boxes here, like for a house, they have holes in the back of them. I fill those holes with uh, caulking so that uh, nothing can leak inside here. And I put these switches in here uh, so that I can flip on the front light on the bow of the boat. And I can flip on the middle light right here for this part right here. And I can flip on uh, the depth finder here, too. And uh, I'm going to eventually find the switch that I'm looking for. A lot smaller than this. But this, this will work for what I'm doing. And um, new tag, new uh, rubber tag holder right there on it. And I like reflectors on the back of my boat. Anything that make it more safety, people can see it better. Uh, even on the water, maybe. Those are stick-on, 3M tape. And uh, I don't think I mentioned the uh, paddles here. These paddles are about six foot tall, and uh, they are used like stilks, where if you get into shallow water, because these boats were floating about eight inches of water, they'll float. And I've gotten back in these coves sometimes, and the water's like eight inches thick, and you want to get on back in there. And you can use these paddles to push down on the, you know, th on the ground uh, as you push the boat through there. Because the trolling motor's not going to, it's going to be too low. Uh, uh, you know, it would, it would hit, the, hit the bottom of the sand and all. So that's why we have these paddles. And I got a zip tie right here, tying it to this wooden piece right here. 
so that the zip tie holds that so it doesn't those paddles don't bounce around or slide around okay and what else um the other thing i guess would be um i would mention that on the side of here i put water bug let's see if we can see that and i'm going to um paint that white i just kind of outlined the water bug there and i'm going to paint it white that's originally the color it was it was kind of like an off white i guess but uh, most people don't know what a water bug is anymore because um, they don't make them anymore they quit making them in the 90s so uh still a great boat to me i just have a lot of memories with this boat back in the 90s so anyway uh these are some of my favorite rods. I have a lot of rods, and this one here, of course, is a fly rod. I have maybe 25 fly rods. I have all kinds from the bamboo fly rods and all kinds of fly rods. Uh, my father raised my brothers and I up on fly rod fishing, part of that. And this is an eight-foot fly rod right here, pretty long, which is good. It works like a cane pole too. This eight foot fly rod, you can use it like a cane pole, hold it straight out too, uh, if you want to do that, especially if you're fishing with crappie and stuff. Now, th these rods right here are my favorite. This is one, two, three, and this is four, which is a, it's a nice rod, but it's not quite the same as these three. These three rods are Shimano fighting rods. This is like year one when shimano first came out with graphite rods that was a thing of the future way back and with shimano fighting rods uh, they are just beautiful to look at i mean with the with the carbon fiber uh in these rods um this was the real deal and they were really expensive really expensive back in the day you know for the for the inflation price today would probably cost you a couple of hundred dollars or more uh, for what it would cost you today if you bought something of this value back then which was a lot of money for a lot of people back then years ago so anyway i bought the shimano rods and i bought the uh shimano reels and this is a, a light action right here uh which is one of my favorite catching panfish and you know brim and stuff like that uh, it's kind of almost like an ultralight the way it's, I've got it set up with Shimano reel. And then this is a medium action right here, Shimano rod. And this is a heavy action Shimano rod. And this right here is also a Shimano rod. It's not this type of Shimano rod. You know, that that particular area is a newer design. Uh, but it's very similar to of a fight, of the fighting rod. So, But uh, just to show you the beauty of this rod right here um, uh, maybe you can see that it's that beautiful carbon fiber uh, that glistens like that and the gold writing on it and then the red pen stripes on it and and these things were just absolutely beautiful rods You can see that. I got the sun in my eye. But uh, Shimano makes some really great rods. And and this Shimano reel. And the reels work like brand new. And the rod works like brand new. And they're still beautiful. And this is like over 30 years, uh, at least 30 years, that um, I've had these Shimano rods. And they were really expensive when I bought them. And I knew, you know, if you buy something expensive, you got to take care of it, right? Okay, guys, that's about it, I guess, on the water bug. And the water bug is, the water bug is really uh, looking good. And I'm really glad it's back up and going again i just need to put my motors on motor on it and um we'll be ready thanks for watching guys gary j